Good morning, everyone. My name is Dean Lombard, and I serve ESF as the Vice Provost and Dean for Student Affairs. I am thrilled to be among the first people to officially welcome you to ESF. Um, a special welcome to students who are joining us remotely in our online sustainability management program and others, but we are delighted that you have chosen to transfer to ESF and to commit to your education here. So a little bit about me before we get started. I'm starting year number 11 here at the College of Environmental Science and Forestry, and I've been at all kinds of different places, large, small, public, private, urban, rural, and I can tell you without hesitation that this is my favorite place where I have been. And the reason for that, it's the same reason that any of my faculty or staff colleagues would answer if you ask them why they stay at ESF, and it is because of you. It is because of our students. Your commitment to wanting to improve the world, your scary smart, um, it is a delight to work on your behalf, and I'm pleased to be here with you this morning. I choose to live in the neighborhood, so I live about a mile from campus with my 15-year-old daughter who's getting ready to start her sophomore year of high school. Um, and part of the reason that I live in the neighborhood is so that I can spend time on campus participate in things like Saturday of service and campus barbecues and those kinds of things, but also because I love to see our students out and about in the neighborhood. So if I run into you in the grocery store or in one of the local parks, or if you happen to come to my church one day where I worship, I would love it if you would walk up to me and introduce yourself to me. Let me know how your ESF experience is going because I really do want to hear from you and hope that it's a good experience. So this morning, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about the special place that you have chosen to join and our sense of community here. I am here representing a team of over 20 outstanding professionals in our Division of Student Affairs, and I want to give you the highlights of what you might expect and the programs and resources and services that you will have access to now that you are here at ESF. Talk a little bit about the importance of your well-being um, give you some pointers on how to make the most of your time here and then bring it to conclusion. So, so I'm here in part to talk a little bit about community and the sense of community that we have here. And you can see in number three um, that one of the definitions of community is that it's a group sharing common characteristics or interests, distinct in some respect from the larger society. And I think that that describes the ESF community perfectly, because we all have different backgrounds and different interests, but the thing that binds us together is our shared concern for the world around us and the environment. So I do not have a science background, but I am pleased to be able to support you and our faculty in the important work that you do. So that is the thing that brings us all together and provides us with this sense of community. Um, when I was putting this presentation together, I sent a message out to our faculty, staff, and students, and I said, what is the one word that you think describes the ESF community? And within less than an hour, I got several hundred responses, and you can see on the Wordle up on the screen there, those words that popped up a lot. Supportive, unique, committed, caring, dedicated, passionate. I can tell you that all of those words describe you and your classmates and our community here at, at ESF. So as I said, I am here representing an outstanding team of over 20 professionals who are committed to you and your experience outside of the classroom. So you can see a snippet of our mission statement on the screen in front of you, but I want to highlight um, that we advance personal and professional growth through leadership and engagement opportunities. So you'll hear a lot about that today and over the next several days and weeks about ways that you can get connected and grow and develop yourself here. Our promise to you is that we are committed to creating an outstanding student experience with you. So making sure that you get the most of your time here at ESF. Our Division of Student Affairs is comprised of a number of different functional areas. Everything from academic support to athletics to counseling services and other things. And so I'm just gonna give you 
a very, very brief overview of those areas so that you know what is on our campus designed specifically for you to use to help support yourself. Um, our academic support program has moved into beautifully renovated space in the basement of Moon Library, which is right across the drive from here. Um, as part of the tuition and fees that you already pay, you have access to tutoring services through our Academic Success Center. They are housed in the same space as our Writing Resource Lab, our Math Center, our Public Speaking Lab, all resources that I would strongly encourage you to take advantage of. They do academic coaching in our Academic Success Center. Um, they do workshops and programming, programming specifically to help you be successful in the classroom. Our career services staff is also part of our Division of Student Affairs. They host a career and internship fair every semester. Um, they also host graduate and professional school fairs. It's never too early for you to think about getting connected with career services. So you might think, oh, I can wait for that until my last year when I'm getting ready to graduate. I would encourage you to connect with them even yet this year. So. They can help you with things like for those people who might be thinking about changing their major or help you with an internship search for the summer. Lots of opportunities through that staff. They do one-on-one -on -one coaching as well and they do a lot of larger scale programs and activities. Many of you might see them even in your classroom as faculty members invite them. Sarah mentioned a few moments ago our community service program here on campus. I'm really, really proud to tell you that ESF students literally volunteer and um, help the community around them tens of thousands of hours every year. They do that in and around the Syracuse area and around the world. So not only do you have opportunities to get engaged in the community through the clubs and organizations that we host on our campus and that Syracuse University hosts on their campus. But as Sarah mentioned, we start that commitment uh, to service tomorrow with our Saturday of service. So I hope that you will consider joining us. We host campus days of service every semester. Um, lots of opportunities there. Our intercollegiate athletics program is also part of our division of student affairs. We have 11 teams that compete at the intercollegiate level, teams that um, are probably very familiar to you, like men's and women's soccer, men's and women's cross country and track. We have a men's basketball team, we have a golf team, and then a couple of teams that I had never heard of until I got to ESF 10 years ago. We have a really strong timber sports program, um, also known, formerly known as our woodsman's team. That is actually our oldest student organization our oldest competitive athletics team. If you have never seen timber sports, please make sure that you have the chance to experience what they do. It's a little unnerving for me when they're there with their chainsaw, but it is amazing what they can do. We also have a competitive bass fishing team, which of course I had never seen that before I got to ESF either. So some really great opportunities for students to either get engaged as athletes or for um, spectators. But that may not be everyone's thing, either participation or spectatorship, is that a word, of athletics. Through our unique relationship with Syracuse University, our students have access to all of the recreational facilities there. So they host a number of intramural opportunities, which is kind of student against student competition, generally like floor sections against each other in things like broom ball or water polo or whatever that might be. Um, and they also host a number of club sports and intramurals. You met Laura a little bit earlier. She is our Director of Student Involvement and Leadership. So she helps to plan some major programs that um, you will participate in. So at the one end of your experience is this orientation experience as you're transitioning to campus. At the other end of your ESF experience, that's the office that plans commencement. And they do lots of things in between. They do leadership development programming, they work with all of our student organizations and clubs on our campus. We host over 40 on the ESF campus. They work with um, other major campus programs. They advise our undergraduate student association, which is the student government for undergraduate students. So they also um, 
coordinate our food pantry. So that is a new initiative that we have offered for the last couple of years. Um, what we know nationally is that college students are at increased risk of food insecurity. And so we wanted to do something about that to make sure that our students had access to food. So we have a, pan a food pantry in the basement of Bray Hall. Bray Hall is, if you've been to financial aid yet or the cashier's office or the registrar's office, that is Bray Hall, our administration building, which is directly across the quad from our library. It's also where most of the student affairs offices are located. Our office, the main office is 110 Bray Hall, right across from financial aid, but it's also where our food pantry is located. And through a grant from SUNY, um, we're going to be able to um, offer perishable foods as well later this semester. So we're very happy about that. I would love to say that's something that we would like to not have to offer our students, but we know that students need it and it's there for you if you find yourself needing that. We have a close working relationship with Centennial Hall, our residence hall. I know many of you may be living off campus, but maybe some of you are also living in that building. That's an important start for our students who spend that first year and, and get the support and the programming and the community development that they need. We are fortunate to receive funding from the state of New York for our educational opportunity program. That is a college access program that makes college available to traditionally underrepresented or financially disadvantaged students. So I'm very happy to have that relationship with New York State. And we also have staff in our Division of Student Affairs whose primary job it is to help support you and get connected to resources that you might need. So whether those resources are on our campus or on the Syracuse University campus um, or out in the community, that is a great place to come. So if you find yourself not sure where to turn, not sure where to go to get some assistance, keep in mind that Student Affairs is here for that purpose. We're a phone call or a visit away. Our office is open 8 to 4.30, Monday through Friday, and you can also call or email us. In addition to our colleagues in the Division of Student Affairs, we also work closely with other offices around campus to help support students. So we work very closely with our colleagues in the Office of Inclusion, Diversity, and Equity, and our Office of International Education to help sponsor programming and provide direct support to our international and underrepresented students. We are very, very concerned about your well-being. Now, I have every confidence that you can handle the academic rigor of ESF or you would not have been admitted here. And all of you as transfer students have had some experience with college level work at at least one other institution. But you can't be successful in the classroom if your mental and physical well-being isn't taken care of. So I wanna highlight a couple of resources for you um, we have counseling services available on our campus. Again, that office is located in Bray Hall. Their mission is to provide short-term, solution-focused support for our students. So most counseling services on college campuses are designed for short-term support. So to get you through a particular challenge or hurdle that you might be facing. Our counseling services is available to all our students. So full-time, part-time, undergraduate, graduate students. And it is part of the tuition and fees that you already pay. So there's no additional cost for you to use counseling services. One of the few positive things that I would say to you that's come out of COVID is that um, mental health care providers have been able to provide service virtually in a way that they weren't able to do pre-COVID. So, um, so some of you may still have relationships with mental health care providers at home that you're maintaining, but if you need assistance, our counseling services is available to you. If you need longer term ongoing assistance, they can also get you connected to a health care provider out in the community. So a mental health care provider out in the community. And of course that would be um, managed by your personal insurance or um, by you. Now ESF does not
have a student health service on our campus. But we are fortunate to be located where we are, very in very close proximity to a couple of hospitals, to a private medical practice called Kraus Medical Practice, where we've established a relationship for ESF students to receive preferred service from, um, or priority service from Kraus Medical Practice. So all of our students are required to have health insurance. We need to be reasonably sure that when you come to campus, you have access to health service if you need it, because we don't have that on our campus. But we've um, established this relationship with Kraus Medical Practice. They're a very easy walk from campus. They're open Monday through Friday, eight to five regular business hours. You are not required to use Kraus Medical Practice, but it's there for you if you would like to use it. They take all major insurance and will work closely with you to try to make their services accessible to you. Um, you will see, if you have a full-time schedule right now, you should have seen a charge for the ESF student health insurance plan placed on your bill. So $2,400 and change. I know that most of you likely have health insurance through some other means, parents or guardians, through your employment, sometimes through your spouse or partner. So we have no financial incentive at all to keep you on the ESF student health insurance plan. Um, if you have health insurance through some other means, please make sure if you haven't done this already that you waive out of the ESF student health insurance plan. You can do that by sitting down at your computer, logging into the My ESF portal, looking under the action items tab, and entering some information about your insurance plan and that will waive you out of the ESF student health insurance plan. That is one of the things that you need to do every year. So if you are a full-time student, this will be placed on your bill every fall. As long as you have health insurance through some other means, you can get yourself waived out of that. The deadline to do that is September 30th every year. So you wanna make sure you do that. Some of you may not have seen that charge on your bill yet because you may not have a full-time schedule yet. So please make sure that you pay attention to your bill at the point that you have a full-time schedule, so that's 12 or more hours for undergraduate students, that charge will show up on your bill and then you need to waive out of it. Once you waive out of it, it takes about 48 hours for that to come off of your bill. So look for that every year. Um, another resource that I want to mention to you is the Syracuse University Center for Disability Resources. So many of you, most of you, are likely aware of the very unique relationship that we have with Syracuse University. It's one of the um, really outstanding things that I think we have to offer to ESF students. So in addition to being able to you know, engage with your faculty and your, your student colleagues here at a small place at ESF and really get deeply embedded, you also, by virtue of the tuition and fees that you already pay have access to almost everything at Syracuse University with a few key exceptions. So there are a handful of classes that you aren't able to take at Syracuse. Most of the classes are available to you, but there are some that are not. ESF students do not get their counseling service or their health service at Syracuse University. And I just talked to you about how you can access those services in a different way. And you also can't play on a Division I athletics team because the NCAA doesn't like that. Otherwise, the fees that you pay support your full access to Syracuse University, to discounted tickets for athletic events and for concerts that might come, and to the over 400 student organizations that they host on their campus. ESF students can join those groups just like SU students can, <coughs> to their libraries, to their dining facilities, to their recreation facilities. All of that is accessible for you. <coughs> Excuse me. So I would strongly encourage you to take advantage of that. One of those resources, again, is the Center for Disability Resources. So some of you may have had academic accommodations set up at your previous institution. Some of you may have had 
IEPs are similar at, during K through 12. The place to help set you up your, with your academic accommodations that you might need here is the Syracuse University Center for Disability Resources. So you can connect with them initially through their online portal. You can go to syr.edu and just put disability resources in the search and their information will pop up. Establish yourself as a client there, upload any documentation that you might have. You'll be assigned to a counselor and you can move forward that way. If this applies to you, I would, oh, thank you. I would encourage you to, um, to take care of that sooner than later because uh, accommodations are not retroactive. So if you've got questions about that though, you don't need to share with ESF that you have, are working with disability resources, but if you need assistance or you need to help navigating that relationship, that's what our staff is here for in student affairs. And then I also want to mention and acknowledge that some of you um, may not use your legal names in your everyday interactions. So if you live with a different name, either a nickname or a, any, for whatever reason, um, you do not tend to associate with your legal name, we have a lived name process that allows you to notify the college that you use a different name from your legal name and it can help you to understand where we can um, change your name on things like you know, course lists and your portal and when you get emails from the college um, and where we have limitations and are required to use your legal name. So that is part of your well-being is making sure that we address you in the way that you want to be addressed. So if you need assistance with that, um, certainly let any of us know that or you can go right to our webpage and find the lived name process to alert the college right under the um, Title IX coordinators page, so, okay. Okay, so very briefly, I just wanna talk about how you use your time at ESF and encourage you to make the most of it. So you've kind of heard a theme through my presentation about connecting with the resources that are available to you. I strongly encourage you to explore ESF to its fullest to grab a hold of all of the opportunities that are here for you. We know that those students, we know this from years and years of research on college students, that those students who get connected and find their place on campus are more likely to be successful and more likely to graduate, which is what your ultimate goal is. So explore ESF, but also explore Syracuse University because it's a resource for you. Your fees are supporting your access to that and I would encourage that. Explore the city of Syracuse and beyond. Give of your time and talent, either on our campus, in Syracuse, or beyond that. ESF students have so much to offer. And, and relative to that last bullet, be a good member of the ESF community in the university neighborhood. I mentioned in my introduction that I live in the neighborhood. So when I tell people I meet where I work, without fail, someone will say to me, oh, I love ESF students. They live next door to me, or they help in my classroom, or I met somebody through this group. They are so helpful. I just love your students. Yes, I just love our students too. But a, a gentle reminder, especially for many of you living out in the neighborhood, to be a good neighbor so that we can maintain that great feeling toward ESF students. So engage. Engage in your learning, engage in the classroom. As I said, um, getting connected will help you to be successful and ultimately help you to graduate. So you all know this, you've all done college level work at this point as a transfer student, but go to class, go to every single class, sit in the front row if you can. Make it a point to meet with your instructors, visit them during their office hours, or attend their additional recitations or class sessions. Do all of your homework, do it on time, get tutoring, even if you think you don't need tutoring, give some thought to tutoring because that can be very, very helpful and get hands-on experience. But our mission in student affairs is not only to help you be supportive in the classroom, or to be successful in the classroom, but also to support your learning and growth outside the classroom. So again, give thought to joining a student organization or two either here or on the Syracuse University campus. We have a student portal coming this semester that is called the Engage Student Portal. 
that will help you to be more aware of what's happening on campus. I encourage you to subscribe to that when you have the opportunity. As I mentioned, involved students tend to do better academically and graduate at higher rates, but don't get too involved, especially this first semester. ESF is a, can be a tough place academically, and that's your first priority. So make sure that you get connected and do well academically, get involved, but not over-involved outside of the classroom. So I wanna shift a little bit to talk a little bit some, about some of the expectations that we have for you. And one is to plan early. As I said, seek out career services now. Um, don't wait until your last year. Seek out your academic advisors and your instructors. They want to get to know you and understand the deadlines. Not just the deadlines for your classes, you know, when, when projects and homework are due, but the deadlines for things like registering for classes, waiving out of the health insurance plan, um, registering for classes for the next semester. So understand the, the deadlines, keep them in the calendar on your phone or use your planner that you got when you checked in, whatever works best for you. Make sure that you understand the deadlines so you can adhere to them. Understand the expectations that we have for you. So I've alluded a little bit to your high, the high academic standards that we have for you and expectations that we have. But as I've said already, but I'll underscore it, I'm absolutely confident that you can manage those academic expectations. You've done well where you've been previously. You've been admitted to ESF. You can do the work but sometimes you're gonna need assistance in doing that work. So make sure that you understand what your instructor's expectations are and familiarize yourself with our academic integrity policy. So in some classes, it's going to be encouraged and perfectly acceptable for you to work in groups to get your work done. In other classes, you're going to need to work only independently to get your work done. So make sure you understand what your instructor's expectations are so that you don't accidentally find yourself on the wrong side of our academic integrity policy. We also have very high behavioral expectations for you. So likely you all checked the box that said you familiarized yourself with the ESF student handbook, but my guess would be that you probably didn't take the time to sit down and read the ESF student handbook yet. Uh, but, you know, take a look at it. It has our code of student conduct in it. It has our alcohol and drug use policy, our sexual um, violence prevention policy. We hold you accountable to all of those policies and expectations, so make sure that you familiarize yourself with them. There are also expectations that we have for you relative to COVID. So, um, and you've seen the changes in the messaging this week with the approval of one of the doses of vaccine now. So all ESF students, all SUNY students and CUNY students are now required to be vaccinated. You are required to wear masks according to the masking framework that we've adopted from Syracuse University. So it's a four colored system that tells you what's required, what's recommended, indoors and out relative to masking. Um, if until you are fully vaccinated, which is defined as two weeks after your last dose of vaccine, so either one dose of Johnson & Johnson, two doses of Pfizer or Moderna, you are expected to test weekly. That testing happens in the Kimmel Dining Hall on the Syracuse University campus. I do expect at some point that SUNY will be asking campuses to do surveillance testing of their entire population. So when we know what that expectation is, we will communicate that with you. But we do expect that you will follow all of the requirements related to vaccination and testing and masking so that we can keep our campus as safe as we can. And then finally, I want to remind you that email is the official means of communication between you and us. So important notifications will come via your syr.edu email. Please make sure if you haven't gotten in the habit yet that you check that at least daily, forward it to a, another account if you need to, 
make sure that you adjust your filters so that emails from the college don't end up in your junk or spam folder because you'll be accountable for the information that comes in those emails. And we use social media and other things too, but email is the official means. So, you know, the last day to drop a class is going to come via email, that reminder. Reminders to waive out of health insurance and so on are going to come via email. So make sure that you get in the habit of checking that at least daily. So finally, I want to remind you to take care of yourself. You can't do well in the classroom if you aren't taking good care of yourself. Ask for help if you need it. I've gone over all of these resources that are available to you on our campus and at SU, but we can't always know when you need help. So you are your own best advocate. If you need help, we're here for you, but you might need to ask for it. Take advantage of those resources that I've gone over counseling, the Center for Disability Resources, tutoring, and everything else, and um, manage your time well. If that's, if that's not a strength of yours, talk with us, and we can help you look at ways to better manage your time. So take good care of yourself, but also take care of each other. We are part of a community. We need to look out for each other as well. So we have our Choose Action Network, which um, is focused on um, decreasing sexual assault on campuses and focuses on sexual assault prevention and bystander training, connect with their work. Um, be familiar with the alcohol and drug amnesty policy. So don't be afraid if you or one of your classmates needs assistance. Don't be afraid of getting in trouble with our code of student conduct. If you need help, we encourage you to, to reach out for that help. Um, and be a positive influence in our community because you are part of the ESF community now. We are delighted to have you here. We know that you had a choice about where you transferred and we are so pleased that you chose ESF for the next few years of your college study. So we look forward to you making your contribution to our community and we're here to assist if you need it. Thank you. So I think I'm going to invite Sarah back up to the podium. Am I going to introduce Amelia?